Matthew chapter 11. We're moving from, we've been talking about the blood of Jesus for quite some time. <clears throat> but for, for a while I've been impressed concerning the kingdom of God. And, you know, it's important that we talk about the kingdom of God. Because remember when Jesus preached, he didn't just preach the gospel. He preached the gospel of the what? Of the kingdom deals with God's kingdom, in other words, his authority, his rule, and his reign. And I think there's a lot of things that we don't understand about that, that we've simplified it. And I think that we need to move into the realm that God wants us to move into because it deals with power and authority in the church. Because the kingdom of God is where? Within you. It's within you. Okay, and remember, messenger who will go ahead of me and prepare hearts to receive me. For I tell you the truth, throughout history there was never been a man who surpasses John the baptizer. Yet the least of those who now experience heaven's kingdom realm will become even greater than he. From the moment John stepped into the scene until now, the realm of heaven's kingdom is bursting forth, and passionate people have taken hold of its power. Baptizer. Yet the least of those who now experience heaven's kingdom realm will become even greater than he is. John the Baptist, Jesus said, was the high water mark of all prophets. There was never a prophet any greater than Jesus or than John the Baptist, but Jesus said these words. He said, even those who were born after the resurrection would surpass the religion John the Baptist. Just for a minute. What were the great things that you saw about John the Baptist? Did he do any miracles that were recorded? Do you find any miracles? Do you see where John the Baptist raised the dead? Do you see where uh, John the Baptist healed anybody? Do you see where G uh, John the Baptist multiplied the fish and the loaves? Do you see any of those things about John the Baptist? You don't see any of those. But he, so he, comp he says he's even greater than Elijah. You think about Elijah, what Elijah did. He prayed and stopped the rain. He prayed again. He started. God sees about us. It causes us to see things through the lens of heaven. It causes us to see things from God's perspective about you and I in the kingdom of God. It's talking about and dealing with the realm of living that would soon become available to every believer after John the Baptist. What is that? Okay, so let's stop and think about this for a second. Go with me to uh, Matthew chapter 3. And kingdom authority that is by the Holy Ghost and he baptizes you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Something that no other Old Testament prophet, even John the Baptist, had not experienced or lived. Do you follow that? Okay? So here John does something. John makes a statement of baptism. Yes, he got baptized in water, but remember when he came out of the water straightway, the Scripture says that the Holy Ghost descended upon him in the form of a dove, and Jesus was baptized in the Holy Ghost. So John was saying this, I, I personally am not worthy enough to baptize you in water, but I personally need the same bapti baptism what you are baptized with. And if John was the greatest of all, in your immediate, you'll never reach your ultimate. And you'll get this in just a second. Okay? <clears throat> Let me just give you this illustration. How many have ever bowled? Anybody ever bowled before? I think everybody on the face of the planet is bowled, right? So you grab the ball and you're looking down the lane and you see all those pins down there, but an experienced bowler, bowler they, there's dots down here where you get your approach and you know where you're going to It was the immediate target. That was the arrow. Some of you are going, wait a minute. No, that's not true. No, it is true. Because remember, Jesus declared that he came to seek and save that which was lost. That's the immediate goal. 
But the ultimate goal of God sending Jesus was to fill men with his Holy Spirit. Why? Because the scripture declares in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 19, it says, I got saved. I got my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I get to go to heaven. I don't have any other responsibilities. I'll show up to church when I want to show up to church, and I'll read my Bible when I want to read my Bible. As long as my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, I'm just going to struggle through this life unvictoriously. I don't know about you, but that's not the ultimate that God had for our lives. He wants you saved, delivered, healed, baptized in the Holy First, the blood signifies for us as a prophetic picture of our life in Christ. When we come to Christ, we're cleansed, we're, we're set free from the, what? From the destroyer. The blood of Jesus Christ gives you protection from the destroyer. Who is the destroyer? The thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. We know that's the devil, right? And after they got saved... That's, a new te that's an Old Testament picture of ourselves into the promised land. Remember, God intended, fully intended, for them never to stay in the wilderness. It was by their own doing that they stayed in the wilderness. God brought them out of Egypt, took them through the Red Sea, was going to just take them right around Mount Sinai and deliver them right into the land of promise. And before they could go into the land of promise, remember that they had to have another river of choice. Okay? That's the way we're supposed to be living. But some of, some, the devil, see, he fights against the baptism of the Holy Spirit so bad because he doesn't want people to walk in the truth of the victorious living that God has for them. Because he knows that he is defeated, and if he can convince people that he can still walk in authority over them, he will do that. Doesn't mean those people don't get to go to heaven. They just get to go in limping. They fought a lot of battles. Would you all agree with that? I mean, there's a lot of battles that are recorded, right? But when they got into the promised land, didn't mean they didn't have any more battles that they fought, but they fought them differently. Pause, stop, and think about this. They fought battles on the wilderness side, but they crossed over in the baptism of the Holy Spirit into the promised land side against Jehoshaphat. And from every side, and Jehoshaphat began to praise. I would start praying too, and he got a lot of people coming against you, right? He just began to start praying, and the Lord told him to do this. He says, I don't want you to fight in this battle. He says, don't be dismayed, don't be afraid on account of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, it is mine, saith the Lord. And this is what I want you to do. I just want you to send out praisers into the midst of that battle. And when they that are tired, send them home. And of course I'm paraphrasing, but you can go back and you can read it. He says, that's Joshua 7 if you want to read it. He says, go send those guys home if they're too tired to go to the battle. 10,000 of them remained. So 12,000 of them were tuckered out. 10,000 of them remained. And God goes, hmm, you know, this isn't real fair if I send these 10 of Jordan, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. So you and I need that baptism of the Holy Spirit. We're entering into a realm where we need to defeat the enemy in our midst. The church has been too long at entertaining. The church has been too long at doing things by the arm of their flesh rather than moving by the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Can somebody say amen? What we do is we learn to what live with the enemy. Come on. Contentment short of God's purposes means that we are content to live with the enemy. I'm not content to live with the enemy. Not one bit, okay? I need to be satisfied with everything that God has for me. And what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to be satisfied. See, the church over the past year... <clears throat> has been satisfied with sitting on the banks of the river rather than crossing all the way over. 
The view was good from the wilderness side. The lifestyle was even better if you got in there. Okay? Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. Let's look at that. Is come unto you. If I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Notice there's a very close attachment concerning the Holy Spirit and the kingdom of God. Do you know that for a while, I, and I just feel like I need to say this, for a while, the church rose up against people talking and preaching about the kingdom of God to you. The first part of that, notice there it says, by the Spirit of God. What you need to understand is that the Holy Spirit encompasses all of the kingdom. They're separate, or should I say, they are the same, but they're inseparable. You cannot separate the kingdom of God from the Holy Spirit. You can't do that. They're different, but they're the same, if I can put it that way. Full immediately, silver and gold have I none, but such as I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk, and immediately he was healed. And you read the book of Acts all the way through when the church was moving by the authority and the anointing, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the blind were seen, the, the dumb were were speaking, the lame were walking, the dead were raised, the demoniac were set free. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. They were doing exactly what Jesus said, the truth and the life. He also said, I am the what? The light of the world. Now watch what happens when the kingdom of God comes upon the kingdom of darkness. If you were to turn off every light in here, don't do it, Mark. <laughs> don't do it, Mark. <laughs> If you turn off every light in here and it became pitch black and you couldn't see anything, what happens if you just turned on one light? What happens to that darkness? It goes, right? Power and authority. Remember what Jesus did. Jesus did under the authority and the anointing of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus did what Jesus did as a man under the authority of the Holy Spirit. He didn't do it as deity. And when we grab a hold of that reality, why? So that you and I could see and do exactly what he asked. Ready for a greater victory. I'm, I want a greater victory now. <laughs> okay? Baptism of the Holy Spirit. See, with him in us, if you could just get this more than anything else I may have said to you today, Within him, with him in us, in that greater de degree, the incomprehensible now becomes God's kingdom, power, and authority. God hasn't changed his mind about that one bit. One of the things that we need to do is that God does not need to try to be supernatural. He's already supernatural. News break. Already supernatural. So because of that, we get to the body of Christ. Now is the time. You say, well, I've already been baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's okay, you can get rebaptized, and I can prove that to you. Acts chapter 4. After Peter and John been in prison and released, and they returned back, and they were having a prayer meeting, it says that they were praying, and they said, God, show forth your power and your glory by extending the hand of your holy child, Jesus, that we might preach the gospel by the demonstration filled back up with the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And remember that the ultimate is for you to receive power. For you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's the ultimate. Follow that? The immediate was the tongue. But the ultimate is power and authority and anointing. 
Kai. Re da bashira moloku, re ma 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 ba ba hete ne mandi a shiboto. Re katititi na shibroku re heshe. Glory. Father, breathe the breath of God upon them. Hallelujah. Breath of God upon them in a greater and a mightier way, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Give them their prayer language if they haven't received it yet, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Baptize them. Fill them to overflowing. In the mighty of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mi barobriya kurama ma 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 ma. Glory and honor in praise. Glory and honor in praise. Hallelujah. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory and honor to you, Jesus. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Hallelujah. In the in your presence, gotta have more of you. In my saturate, saturate me. Oh. So we will hold on as the Holy Spirit is with me in our hands. As we will hold on for your name in your presence. Gotta have more of your anointing. Saturate me. Gotta have more. Glory of honor to Jesus. Worship. Your Nancy. Yeah. 